Hi, everyone. My name is Ayush Chitrakar, and I'm a chemistry PhD student at the University of Michigan. And I'll be talking a little bit about my research, Small But Mighty, The Power of Droplet Microfluidics. Believe it or not, most of you have probably interacted with or at least heard of a microfluidic device. Rapid COVID-19 tests are a form of microfluidic device and were crucial in helping reduce the spread of COVID. So what are microfluidic devices? Simply put, there are devices that manipulate very small volumes of liquid to perform an experiment. These devices have channel widths that are as small as the diameter of a human hair, as you can see here. Microfluidics is a powerful tool that can reduce the footprint of a lab with tons of equipment down to a tiny chip where many steps of an experiment can be compressed. There are many different types of microfluidic devices, but the ones that I work with are called droplet microfluidics. Droplet microfluidics use liquids that don't mix together, like water and oil, to create these tiny droplets. We can create these droplets in a controlled manner to make sure that they are the same size every single time. This makes it so that each droplet becomes a mini experiment that we can perform. One big advantage of this technology is that we are able to generate hundreds of droplets in a few seconds. And with each droplet being an experiment, we can take hundreds of me measurements to speed up an experiment that might take hours down to a few minutes. So where can we apply this technology? I use droplet microfluidics to measure and detect various electrolytes. Electrolytes are charged atoms that are found within our body that play a vital role in many bodily functions. These electrolytes include potassium, calcium, sodium, and magnesium. We get a lot of these electrolytes through the food that we eat, but we can also get them through electrolyte drinks such as Gatorade or liquid IV. Our body is very good at regulating the amount of electrolytes in our body so that it stays within a healthy range. However, it is important to monitor the amount of these electrolytes within our body so that we're able to stay healthy. This is typically done at your annual physical exam where a blood test is performed. For this test, a vial of blood is required, which for me and you is not a lot of blood. But for patients that are suffering blood loss or newborn babies that require uh, electrolyte monitoring can be a lot of blood. This is where my research and droplet microfluidics come in. Our goal is to use very little blood and get accurate measurements of the amount of the various electrolytes present within blood. So how do we actually get to this goal? We need to break the problem down into simpler pieces. We started out by trying to detect only one electrolyte, potassium, in a buffered solution instead of blood. A buffered solution is a much simpler mixture that is a proxy to blood that makes solving any problems that arise easier. As I mentioned earlier, droplet microfluidics uses two phases, an oil phase and an aqueous phase to perform an experiment. Mm. The aqueous phase in this case is the buffer. Since our electrolyte of interest, the potassium, is already in the aqueous phase, we need to take advantage of the oil phase to detect the potassium in our solution. To do this, we developed a potassium selective oil. Our oil has two main components, a chemical that's able to bind to only potassium, the potassium ionophore, and a chemical that is able to fluoresce, a fluorescent agent. So what does the fluorescent agent do? The fluorescent agent is like a light bulb attached to a dimmer switch. Depending on the amount of our analyte that is present in the oil phase, it can brighten or dim the light bulb. And then since we can measure the brightness of a light easily, we can use that to relate how much potassium is in our droplets. So our potassium selective oil is sensitive to different amounts of potassium that is present in our solution. So how does the system actually work? So when we have a sample with no potassium present, no potassium is able to bind to the potassium ionophore, and therefore no, none of the fluorescing agents is able to fluoresce, resulting in no change in fluorescence or no change in brightness. When we have a sample with a small amount of potassium present, the potassium is able to bind to the potassium ionophore, which causes some of the fluorescent agents to fluoresce. This increases the fluorescence or the brightness of our oil phase, which we can measure. 
When we have a sample with a large amount of potassium present, the same thing occurs. The potassium is able to bind to the potassium ionophore, which causes more of the fluorescent agents to fluoresce. This ultimately leads to a higher increase in the fluorescence or brightness of our oil phase, which we can correlate to, to more potassium in our solution. So we can use this potassium selective oil to detect potassium. But how do we change the system to be able to detect other electrolytes such as calcium or magnesium? We can simply change the ion for that we're using. This is the chemical that can selectively bind to whatever electrolyte that we want. So in this case, we can use the calcium ionophore to measure calcium and a magnesium ionophore to measure magnesium. In conclusion, microfluidics is a powerful tool that can miniaturize a lot of lab equipment down to a small chip and significantly speed up the experimental process. My research focuses on the use of droplet microfluidics to eventually measure the amount of electrolytes in blood by using a very small amount of blood. However, as of right now, I've developed a potassium and calcium selective oil that can measure the amount of potassium calcium in a buffered solution. And I'm currently working on developing other ion selective oils for magnesium and sodium to eventually develop a fully fledged sensor that measures all the electrolytes in blood. Ultimately, this sensor will help patients suffering blood loss or babies who require continuous monitoring by using very little blood. If you're interested in learning more about microfluidics or droplet microfluidics, LFlow is a great resource that has a range of blogs to journal papers about microfluidics and is a great place to start to learn more. Thank you so much for listening.